Right, guys, just before we go live, live, but we are live, live onto LinkedIn and Facebook. I, I just have to ask you all a question. I'm just going to give you one phrase, and I want you to give me the first thing that comes into your mind. And that phrase is management development services. Matt, let's start with you. What's the first thing that comes, comes into your mind when you think of MDS, please? Uh, opportunity. <laughs> Ooh, opportunity. So that's Matt. Uh, Kirsty, you go. What's the one, one, what's the thing that you, uh, one word? Um, empowering empowering that's a that's a very good one right let's run through everyone we won't spot everyone because we're not doing this larissa what's the one word when you when you hear mds experience <gasps> ellie resilience resilience john training training lucy talent talent okay come on libby knock it out of the park resilience resilience excellent we are live today with the most amazing eclectic mixture of people from the MDS scheme. And we're broadcasting with them today, very proudly broadcasting with them today on the answer to developing your career and to develop your business with MDS. And for those that aren't aware, can you believe that no one's not going to be aware of, of MDS, of Management Development Services? But MDS works in partnership with over 55 organisations across the fresh produce and fresh food industry to provide a unique graduate scheme unlike any other. MDS trainees can experience four different roles and gain the necess necessary tools to become future leaders, including a professional leadership and management qualification, also, they enjoy mentoring, coaching, and access to exclusive networking events as part of their trainee scheme. Over the last 35 years, MDS has produced a network of over 500 plus food and fresh produce leaders. And we're going live today with a number of the experts to find out why they think MDS is, a, is great for your career-wise and also for companies, why companies need to adopt the MDS scheme to grow a fantastic team ongoing. Um, Kirsty, how did I do? Did I, did I manage to, to sing Very to sell MDS well? Very well. It's, it's hard to describe MDS in a nutshell, but I think you did pretty well there. So, Kirsty, let's start start with your with yourself because it's um, yourself and your great colleague um, Izzy Izzy Douglas who set us up um, on this. I think it was about a year ago that we'd uh, done a previous um, broadcast for MDS uh, with Christine yeah. and with uh, with Safia, and that that went very well. I believe that with all the other marketing that you were doing at the time, you got a, a large number of new applications uh, coming coming through, as well as uh, a lot of company interest. But can you just tell us about you and your role within MDS, please, Kirsty? Um, so I, I'm Kirsty. I'm the business development manager at MDS, and my role is quite all encompassing. Um, but it covers two main areas. So I'm responsible for the recruitment of um, trainees and individuals who want to join our graduate scheme, and then I'm also responsible for um, looking at new members and finding out those those companies who feel that they would benefit from joining the the MDS scheme. Um, and I'm I'm really lucky in that I get to see it from lots of different perspectives because I'm an ex MDS trainee myself many a moon ago now excellent yeah th and Kirsty, if it's okay to say you're, you're the powerhouse in my respect there's a great team with MDS but our, most of our involvement is, uh, is with Kirsty. and if you want to find a, a more efficient person in, in, uh, in the role that you that they do you're going to struggle to find um, anyone uh, more efficient than, than Kirsty. so oh, again you're making me blush to, to, to get in contact with Kirsty, you're going to get a um, you're going to rifle in to find out how the MDS scheme can help you, whether that be as a trainee or as a company. Um, Larissa, come on, let's go over, over to you. Who are you, and what was your journey with uh, with MDS, please? Yeah, so I'm Larissa Keat. I'm currently a customer technologist at Organic Farm Foods, um, and I started Organic Farm Foods in October 2020 so I've been there a year now um, and before that I was on MDS so I finished the scheme and then moved straight into the full-time role. Okay and and I'm, sorry Larissa I'm slightly leading the witness. Um, M MDS thumbs up for you? Thumbs up yeah definitely range of experience and lots of different roles so yeah it was really good to get a broad broad view of the industry and see what's out there really. Excellent Larissa great to have you on. Libby come on tell us your story with MDS please. Um, so I am currently on my third secondment uh, on MDS. I started down in Yeovil, then I was in Stratford upon Avon, and now I'm in Manchester. So I'm working my way up the country, um, loving it. Excellent. And, and what, what was the catalyst, um, uh, Libby, for you to get involved with uh, with MDS? Because presumably you you um, had a had a, the the likelihood that you could have gone off into a full time role. What was the magic dust for you joining MDS, please? Um, it was just 
the sort of opportunity to have four different placements that could be really different. Um, I studied French and Spanish at uni, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So MDS was really appealing in that way because I still am not really sure what I want to do, but just to get the chance to try out different sort of sections of fresh produce was really what attracted me to MDS. Excellent. And, and could you show up? We just had a WhatsApp message. Where is Libby working in Manchester? We want to know. So where are you in Manchester, please? Uh, I'm at Frank Roberts Bakery at the moment. Wow. OK, now that's a, that's, a, that's an impressive business. Uh, Libby, thank you. Ellie, over to you. Who are you? What's your journey with MDS, please? <laughs> Myself, sadly, no journey with MDS, but um, oh. I'm here today representing the Rural Youth Project. So um, yep. we work with young people. We're a grassroots organisation that kind of our team's mission is to better understand young people's needs, um, represent young people and um, yeah, encourage them to develop their leadership, activism and enterprise skills. And so we've had a lot to do with various um, MDS graduates and here today really to just offer a kind of broader picture of what we're learning from what young people are, are asking for in such sort of shifting, changing times. And so um, we yeah really support the MDS scheme and really think it's kind of really beneficial to grow young people's um, resilience and give that variety of experience when, like Libby said, yeah, not necessarily knowing what you want to do after graduating and things. So, yeah. Ellie, well, well done. I always remember a Cranfield course I went to on a, a number of years ago and they showed this, this graph that I've seen in various different guises and it's uh, basically a, a trajectory of, um, of sales, profitability and turnover. And it's indicating that those companies that invest in training and development in their, in their teams and their staff see far better profitability, see far better turnover and see mm. far better staff retention. So it's, it's great to have you on um, in the respect of being sort of a cold eyed outlook as to, as to MDS. But it's in some ways we don't need to, to prove that for people within the sector because as, as my notes say uh, behind my screen, it's been going for 35 years. We've got 500 plus industry leaders all, all already through uh, the, the, the the system so especially with the likes of Kirsty and her colleagues it's only only going to go in one way it's got to go on and on John over to you what's your journey with uh, with yeah, MDS so I'm please yep yeah, I'm John Gonzalez so I completed my MDS um, scheme two years ago um, I started off doing a QA intake role um, procurement then I went on to a line supervisory role and then I guess you could say a continuous improvement role and what's good about MDS is, you know, I found, I guess, the job role that I wanted. Um, so now currently I'm working for Finsbury Food Group. Excellent. I guess equivalent to a continuous improvement lead for our Cardiff site. And I, I think without MDS, if it wasn't for MDS, I wouldn't have discovered lead really? continuous improvement. Excellent. There, there you go. There's a, 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 such a positive endorsement. I don't need to endorse it any, any further. John, thank you. Uh, Lucy, you are in my ho hometown, as, uh, as we were saying in the green room. You're in beautiful Glasgow. Who are you and what's your journey with MDS, please? Yeah, so I'm Lucy Wills. I am the managing director of Finsbury Food Group's um, cake business. And my relationship with MDS has actually got quite a unique role. I'm also a, an MDS um, board director as well. So I guess I've got two hats on today. But um, our journey with MDS has been fantastic. Um, John's obviously, John's one of the, the first trainees that we had in the programme mm. and was uh, tremendously successful. We're glad to have him as part of our Finsbury family now. But really the success we've had with the MDS programme means that it actually drew me into wanting to be a wider part of the MDS organisation because it is so fantastic at bringing talent through into the industry. Excellent. And uh, Kirsty. Lucy, thank you very much. Kirsty, I forgot that's on our last broadcast with MDS. Um, we had the likes of Jonathan Tremaine, or I'm trying to remember the, mm -hmm. the other, other. I'm sure. Yes, um, uh, Jonathan Tremaine, um, we had Rebecca Charnley. So yeah. Jonathan Tremaine was one of our, I think he was in the very first MDS group. Um, and then Rebecca Charnley, she's also on our board of directors um, and is an ex-MDS trainee. So I always say that once once you're in MDS, you never we never let you go um, <laughs> in a lovely way. Um, but it just, I think it goes to show the passion that um, people have because they, they keep up that relationship and we keep up the relationship. You're only with us for two years, but we generally care about people's sort of progress and development much sort of after they've uh, sort of left us and moved on to brighter things. 
Yeah, I've, got, I've just got to get this line in. I, I wanted to say we had a heavyweight in um, being Jonathan Tremaine just so that he could ridicule me for the next time I see him for calling him a, a heavyweight. But having said that, on a recruitment perspective, um, with my recruitment hat on, if we ever see a CV and, um, and as part of that CV, we see that someone has done the MDS scheme, it is a huge endorsement. It's a huge brand to have on your CV within the fresh produce and fresh food sectors. And I'd even go to the point that it will accelerate you um, in, in a recruitment process in, in your career if you've been associated with uh, with MDS. Kirsty, it feels like I've missed someone. Do you know anyone who's got a new lunchbox, who's got a new job, who's got a new suit, who's got Ooh, a new I squeaky think, chair? I think looking very smart today. It's lovely, Matt. Excellent. It's Matt, who are, you? who are you? Tell us about your journey with MDS, please. Hey, Max. So it's probably the second time we've interacted. We've had the pleasure of doing this because you came on my podcast a while ago. Excellent. Um, but uh, I'm Matt. I've been on the MDS scheme. This is my third secondment. So I'm in the same secondment as Libby. I've spent the first year out in Switzerland and Basel working for Syngenta in global biologicals team doing a marketing role. And now I've come to Iceland where I'm working as category buyer. So I've got my own category of halal food. Really wow. enjoying it so far. But it's only been a week. So wow. there's so much more to go and so much more to experience. Well, um, well can, can we just say a big thank you to Iceland? Because it, obviously we're taking time out of your day for you to, to be involved with, with this. But congratulations on your new role with um, with Iceland. And I love that um, that picture that you had off LinkedIn. I can't re remember his name, but your colleague in um, um, from, from Syngenta, who was giving you a big pat on the back, uh, who was giving you an award or something for, for getting you out the door. Mr. Rana Pingel, uh, shout out to him. A great line manager. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, guys, let's just, let's get into the, the nuts and bolts of this, where I think we as a sector within fresh produce and fresh food, we're pretty bad. We're pretty bad at looking to nurture the, the, the talent for the future in comparison to, say, the likes of the engineering sectors. I don't know if you see it, but I see it every year. The engineering sectors are so good at creating this um, this press momentum within the UK that they, they have, a, I think it's, they, they call it the, the engineering day, where they're all over the mainstream press and they'll have um, a, a very uh, in, intelligent boy, girl, stating that they're working for, for Rolls-Royce. It's the best thing that they've, they've ever done. And that's to encourage more people into the, into the engineering sector. The engineering sector means another 35,000 graduates coming through. Um, and in our sector, who have we got? We've got MDS and MDS are, Kirsty, help me here with the terminology. You're you're funded by your um by 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 your members, and you're not full of cash, are you, um, Kirsty? No. So, so, go, Kirsty. Yeah, we're, we're uh, so MDS itself is a not-for-profit organisation, um, and we are funded via our membership, um, and the whole aim of what we do is to sort of provide that link. You're, you're right, um, Max. It's really hard. You see these other industries have a really clear cut um sort of example of what they do when you hear engineering you know you have anyone can have a vague guess at what engineering does it's really easy to see your route into into your path um food and fresh produce it is more difficult a lot of people have sort of misconceptions about what it is they think it's a farmer sitting on a tractor maybe delivering to the supermarkets directly and um, they think it's a lot of um, labour, so to say, somebody's going to going to work in the food industry is going to be quite um, working on the lines, maybe picking. But actually, the industry is really wide and varied. And what MDS tries to do is to help people understand where they can fit within it. So there are engineering, and there is marketing, and there's commercial roles, and there's things that um, John's doing in terms of project management and um, operational sort of control and improvements. And it's really hard to make a wonderful advert and say, this is what the food and fresh produce industry is because it's inexhaustible. You can't, there's no one thing that it is. Yeah, well, well said. And I'd go even further to say that um, it's a bit like marketing of, um, of fresh produce that, that all of the companies that we're associated with, they don't make the margins of, uh, of, of say, a energy drink. Um, that can sponsor a Formula One uh, driver. We, as we know, within the fresh food sectors, the margins are way for thin. And so it's therefore difficult to not only market, but also to create training programs, to create um, a, a process of, of, of companies growing their own and trying to bring people in so they can uh, grow, grow for the future. And again, that's why MDS is so um, important to us. I, I call this the, the I call this the Goldman Sachs moment. That guys, all of you, you could have gone and worked for Goldman Sachs and earn 
110, 120, 130,000 a year. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Working 90 hours um, a week. But actually, it is so important that we have the likes of you within the fresh food sectors. Why is that? Especially on the back of the pandemic, we're picking up that so many people, they want to eat um, on, on a better, on a healthier, uh, more uh, conscious uh, uh, manner. And to do that, we need to have a very professionally run fresh food um, sector. And for that to happen, we need people like you to come into the sector. But so let's just ask all of you, why did you get involved in this, this sector? Because I'm guessing you know, I've been slightly um, uh, glib here, but it, I'm, I'm guessing it wasn't for the money, that it must have been for the, for the passion of it. Why did you get involved in the sector? Go on, Libby, you start us off. Why did you get involved in the fresh food sector? Um, I was thinking about this before coming onto the podcast and um, I think it's having visibility of the job that you do. So I was working at Angus Soft Roots before and it was my favourite thing to do to go into the supermarkets and actually see the berries on the shelves and get so excited about it. And now I'm working for the bakery in logistics and there's nothing more exciting than being on the M1 and seeing one of those lorries zoom past you. And I think it's just like <laughs> actually... Being in a job where you see, where you physically see the impact of what you're doing, I think that's what's so great for me. Well done. Larissa, would you, you, would you have been tempted by my example to go to the city? <laughs> um, I think, I think I, I ring true with Libby there, to be honest. I think the aspect I like the most is the tangible, the fact that you, you, yeah. you can there, you can see your product, you can touch it and when, and then you see it along the full route into the store as well. Um, and yeah, you just get a real care for it. And it's, I guess it's the passion and the love for why we do it because you you go above and beyond to make sure that everything's right. Excellent. And, and John, did you have a background in agriculture, fresh produce uh, before you got involved with, uh, with MDS? No, unfortunately not. My background is accounting and finance. So maybe I would have been at Goldman Sachs, maybe not. <laughs> uh, probably would have failed the personality <laughs> test or something, but um, I remember talking to someone at university and they were they were telling me about food waste and that's what really hit me I think it was something to do with 40 percent of food that is being harvested um, gets discarded away because one you know they're they're wonky or they don't look great so I thought you know maybe there's an opportunity for me to learn about the fresh food industry and maybe make a difference um, you know even small scale or maybe large scale eventually um, and yeah, that's that's the reason why I got attracted to the um, food industry. Excellent. I'm, I'm well said about food waste. I always come up with the same statistic that in the UK, we throw away 1.2 million bananas a day. Um, and just that whole waste, especially when you think of the effort that's, uh, that's, that's gone into them to bring them from the likes of South America um, yeah. over to, to here. But it's 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 been it was all over uh, Times Radio this this morning that uh, the, the the two morning uh, DJs they had to reveal what was in the fridge for people uh, for experts to tell them how they could uh, make sure that none of that that food was uh, was wasted. So there's definitely a sea change on that on that basis. Lucy, come on, um, give, give a your your I, I don't want to call you one of the elder statesmen of uh, of, of this gathering. No, that does because I, I think I'm it. Probably. But, but, but what, Probably I am, to be fair, in the context of the audience here. So um, I actually grew up in quite a foodie family. I had a, my mum was in um, catering her whole career. My dad was actually an FMCG, but on the commercial side or the, the dark side, as some people um, might call it. Excellent. Um, and my um, summer jobs uh, were in a factory in a, a canned meat plant, which was a, quite a character building experience, I have to add, at the time. Um, but I ju just like you know, Libby um, has said, I got fascinated about the whole process of getting product um, right the way through the supply chain um, and actually onto someone's table. But I have to be completely honest and say the, the bit that really motivated me right from the beginning was the people piece. So being able to interact with so many different types of people, different cultures at all different levels, that was the bit that really hooked me on it. And I went off to do a food science degree. Um, wow. And uh, I could have been a dietitian, decided that wasn't for me. Um, okay. And then into a sandwich factory doing a, a CI role and then up and off um, from that point onwards. Yeah, and, uh, look, look where you are now. Beautiful Glasgow running an amazing, amazing business. So, so Matt, you know I'm going to pick on you. you. You could have been anyone. You, you could have been anyone, literally. You could have been a professional <laughs> sportsman. You could have been a professional footballer or a professional ping pong player. But you got into food. Why did you get into food, Matt? To be honest, mine's a bit of a pure chance reaction. I just sort of, uh, university, I did a biology degree and I was supposed to be doing a placement 
And I kind of just saw this role that said field. And I just thought, if I can be outside for a year, I'll take that. Wow. Ended up going to this job at BSF doing field trials. And I saw, to put it plainly, where food came from. And I got hooked. I liked, started seeing all these layers to the food industry going from literally coming out of the ground. I mean, now at Iceland, I'm literally putting it on shelves. You know, I've seen it go through the whole stage and it's just, I mean, kudos to everybody working. There's so many people in each layer and I love it. And it just, the more I learn, the better I get and the more I love it. Yeah, well, well said. Ellie, I don't know if you see this, but um, go on, full of stats today, um, that uh, six out of 10 kids don't know where uh, fresh produce comes from. And, and that's why we've got the, the likes of the amazing Veg Power campaign in the UK that, that are trying to create that difference. Um, Ellie, with the, with the with the group that you that you represent, do you think that there's more that be, can be done with them to encourage them to come into the into the fresh food sectors rather than becoming a a, a Goldman Sachs uh, number rather uh, rather than a name? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of the research that we're doing with the Rural Youth Project is suggesting that um, young people are more values driven than ever, and they're wow. prepared to, like many of the graduates here, like say, um, forego high, high salaries for the sake of working in um, a role that kind of fulfills their their own personal sense of purpose and um, and yeah, more people based roles. And so, yeah, it's it's really interesting that we've seen a huge spike in interest from young people working in the food sector. Um, yeah, and I, th I think this is going to uh, continue we, on this premise that uh, so many kids don't know where uh, fresh produce comes from, um, and th we got this uh, uh, ongoing uh, tra train crash happening with obesity in the likes of the, the UK and, and the Western world. Um, and one of the answers to that, and it's again it's been a bit glib, but one of the answers to that is to exercise more and to eat more fresh produce. And so we need more people um, into into the sector. We're also picking up that there's this. A uh, huge clamour for uh, the younger generation to be involved in in companies that can offer sustainability um, solutions for the for the long term. Look what's just happening at uh, COP twenty six. Um, and it, and see if I can thread this together. Uh, legal in general in the UK for our international uh, viewers is one of the biggest pension investors, um, and uh, they've stated to that the the two hundred top companies that they invest money into that if they don't have a diversified board by the end of 2022 they're going to be pulling funding from those uh, those businesses are i anticipating that the likes of um, that that pension fund legal and general are also going to request slash dictate to those companies that if they don't have a sustainable solution to their business offering that they'll have the funding pool so we're sort of going through this interesting element that there's so many startups um, so many companies involved in looking to create solutions through fresh food but also those that are companies that have perhaps been ch chasing the chasing the pound rather than doing good are going to be they're going to have to go through societal change to actually get involved in uh, doing good by growing but perhaps get involved in, uh, in more fresh food so, so um, everyone Kirsty and I we were talking about the the previous broadcast how we had industry leaders on you are going to be our industry leaders in the future. Today isn't uh, an easy time for uh, food companies. Where do we start, everyone? We've got labor issues, we've got haulage issues, we've got margin issues, and we've got COVID. Um, there's a lot of worried companies um, out there. Um, some of them are just worried about the, the, the short, the medium term, but they'll know they get through it. Some are worried about survival um, because of the issues that they, they're, they're encountering. Uh, Tim O'Malley, uh, he, who's the group MD of Nationwide Produce, as he says, we're in the zeitgeist. Uh, we've never had a, a situation where we've been selling um, so much fresh produce, but we're getting paid less. What sector would allow that to happen where we're selling more because people are doing more scratch cooking, they want to eat more fresh produce, but we're taking a, a smaller return from the retailers? How mad is that? Everyone, what's the solution to this? How can we get more money into the supply chain for for the growers and for the marketeers and for the companies to prosper for the long term. If, if I could give you a magic wand, what would the what would your solution be? Larissa, I'm going to start with you. How would you fix the broken problems that we've got within within fresh food at the moment? Go on, Larissa. What a question. I think um, I think John alluded to it before. And I think one of the main things that we can tackle and really go after is the food waste. So as we've said, over a third of all food is, is wasted um, and that's globally. And we obviously, we're taking that food from countries where we're taking that resource, we're taking the nutrient from the soil, the water, we're exporting it, we're importing it. And then once it's on, the, it goes through a process and once it's on the shelf, finally sort of a third is lost. So 
I think we can really face into that and and come up with solutions. And we're already seeing it. We've had the first um, this year earlier this year there was a first wrap so food waste action week. Yep. Um, that was launched in the UK and there was great interaction with that and sort of bringing it to the households and, and seeing what we can do um, at our level. Okay, so so we've got food, food waste, if we can counter food waste. Um, Libby, we had a really interesting um, interview with um, a, a delightful chap called Matthew Nobbs, who's the commercial director for Gorillas. And if you don't know who Gorillas are, they've, they've uh, secured nearly a billion US in funding. And if you're in London and you have the app, you can download, um, order two and a half thousand different grocery lines and it'll be delivered to you within 12 minutes. No, sorry, 10 minutes. Um, and are they, his point uh, about their business model was fascinating that this exact issue, as um, as Larissa was, uh, was stating, that you buy all your food on a big shop on a Saturday. By the end of the week, your fruit and veg is going off in the fridge. Why not buy your toilet paper and your pasta on a Saturday, but uh, during the week when you need it, you just uh, dial up um, uh, gorillas and you get your uh, fruit to make a fruit salad or in the morning you, you get your, your, your porridge, your fresh porridge. So it's going to be better. So, so Libby, what's your thoughts? How can we cure some of the ills that we've got within the sectors at the moment, please? I think mine is probably a bit of a plug for MDS in that get more graduates who are like, clearly very passionate about the industry, get them attracted to MDS, get them going, get them into these big companies. Because like having listened to all of us today, we're clearly very passionate about it and we want the best for it. So I think just like getting more young people interested in fresh produce, getting more people onto schemes like MDS to try and make it better and cure these problems that we've got. Well, well done. And ooh, I just lost the spotlight. Lu Lucy, over, over to you. You wanted to say something, please. Yeah, I'm just going to tie into what Libby had said there. Um, you know, what it's going to take is we need more fresh thinking, pardon the pun, in the industry. Uh, and we do need more brain power. So, for example, I, I would say, particularly within um, food, uh, we're still relatively underinvested when it comes to automation. You know, if you were to compare us to the drinks industry, for argument's sake, there's still a lot more to go at, which creates a perception uh, and is factually correct today that we have a high draw on lower skill roles. But what we need is we need more talent to come into the industry, more graduates who can drive um, a change in the status quo, bigger thinking, um, which will drive um, different solutions to, let's call it a spade a spade, the cost challenges that we yeah, have, but, but also will drive the sustainability agenda forward. So really, yeah, it was just to kind of almost back that point up that I think that's absolutely critical. And we've also got to get over, I would say, we have a bit of a PR problem uh, for the reasons that Kirsty uh, really articulately sort of pointed out at the beginning. But again, I believe by bringing more um, fresh talent into the industry, that will actually help the PR. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy yep. almost. Well done. But um, Lucy, thank you. Kirsty. Yeah, so I'm um, sort of really drawing on what Lisa is saying. We are all aware at the moment that we have a huge uh, labour shortage within the industry. And the solution is not to find more labour. It's how do we actually become more um, efficient at what we're, we're doing um, and looking at the different engineering routes. But I think to do that, businesses need to understand that they might not be able to go down their traditional routes in terms of recruiting people. So... It's not all about getting people who already know the industry um, looking outside of that into different skill sets. So trying to identify what skills to be. We need more engineers, not necessarily food engineers, but engineers in general. So how do we go about attracting them? Do we look at people going for second careers? Um, MDS is looking to launch an engineering specific program. Oh. We're looking to recruit forces leavers, for example, because we have understood from our, our member businesses that they need uh, a wider variety and if the industry tackles that as a whole to say well actually do you know what let's really fling it open let's see what people can bring to us and maybe get people who are going to ask those difficult questions or question things from a different way because the industry has to continue it has to survive but you can't always just keep doing things in the same way that you, you were before. Kirsty, thank you. That's fascinating um, about the engineering element of MDS. We're going to look at that with great interest. Ellie, over to you. 
Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, go back to Lucy's point as well and just the idea of it being a PR issue and actually the role of storytelling being really important and education more generally. Um, we recently ha have been contacted by Carol Ford, which I th who I think actually yeah. has a lot to do with MDS, but she um, wants to put on a Kent Ideas Festival with us, the Royal Youth Project. And this is something we've done quite a few times. And so it's kind of having a different, it's, it's really interesting because the council have approached us um, for putting on an, an Ideas Festival that's completely catered, um, tailored to the fresh produce sector um, and bringing young people from Kent that have had no experience of the sector um, before and kind of getting having farm tours and getting to know all the different roles that they could get involved with and um and I think maybe thinking about sort of different formats of how we reach people um and different partnerships where you guys could be working with I don't know yeah people like us that who are connected with different young people in really kind of um diverse communities um to get the message out really because it, coming from the outside I don't know what the full kind of span of roles is within the sector and it would be mm. it's really interesting to people and I think there's a real appetite for it but maybe just a lack of knowing where to go yeah but yeah. It, it's, it's fascinating when I go back to my engineering example um Ellie that how well bossed they are and I'm guessing it's a trade organization that's behind them that's uh, looking to to promote them um in, in my experience the only uh, vehicle that we got in our sector is MDS that is promoting uh, the, mm. the, uh, the 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 younger generation to come to, to come through um, and the, the trade organizations that we've got in the sector are, are very very good but they're also um, under uh, underpowered they, they don't have the big budgets um, of the of the likes of some of the other um, uh, food sector trade bodies and other uh, FM, FMCG sectors so, well, well it's like we're sort of the poor cousin um, John what's what's your solution to this how can we get more people into the sector apart from putting you through the photocopy a few hundred times how can we, how can we get more people into the sector John? Well, um, I'm actually right now I'm attending a manufacturing summit at Liverpool and some of the key words that are coming up is to do with sustainability, digitalization and data. And what the keynote speakers are saying is how younger generation now are slowly coming into the food industry because they're finding out more about, you know, what they can do about the food and um, things that they can do in the food industry, how they can help, especially in terms of sustainability. So now they're thinking of, you know, methods of how companies can become more sustainable and you know how they can get their return of investment from that yeah compared to before you know where you have the older generation where their kind of thinking is a bit different to the the younger generation now so i think at the moment i think the solution is just like what everyone's been saying try to bring more you know graduates or younger people in the fresh food industry you know have maybe more marketing at university campuses yeah and because there's there's a lot of things that we can um um like what lucy said you know automation in the fresh food industry we're not really doing that a lot right now but the technology is out there um government grants are out there as well it's just a matter of you know applying for it and just looking out for it yeah joel well, well said um matt can you can you just give a one-line description on syngenta please in, in what terms <laughs> Who, who they are, because although we all know who Syngenta are, then there's a there's a reason a reason for this. Um, who, who are Syngenta, please? Uh, in my eyes, to be honest with Syngenta, I'd say innovation. Really, I'd say we're not just like one of the big things in Syngenta right now is there's really a big promotion for the sustainability that John's talking about. It's not just the classic crop section you're talking about. They're expanding into biologicals, decision, precision, uh, precision editor. You know. So all this other new fields where actually it'll help the environment a bit more as well and help us get the food quality and quantity up. And I think that's what I describe Syngenta as really. So, so thank you, Matt. And, and, and the reason for mentioning Syngenta, there's a standing joke in the in the sector um, that um, even the, the, the cleaner has an MBA in Syngenta. Syngenta has worked out that uh, for the for the business to progress, they've got to train and they've got to develop their people to be market leaders and to crowd out their opposition. So we've got some amazing examples of businesses that have that have worked out that uh, they've got to get the younger generation in. They've got to offer them external training over and above the training that they get. And, and Matt, look, look at the the uh, fortunate situation that you're now in with the, with the likes of Iceland, because Iceland have got a fantastic training scheme as well. And that's how Iceland have become very dominant in their particular interest, industry sectors, their retail sectors. Matt, would that be correct? Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's one of the Iceland's one of the biggest growing online markets during COVID because actually they just 
they had the availability to give people same day delivery, which I think a lot of people were struggling with with COVID. And I think they've really managed to tap into the market with this. So I'm very interested to continue this six months of them. Yeah, well done. Larissa, over to you. Yeah, I was just going to say just to um, sort of to build on the points that Ellie touched on. So I've grown up with an agricultural background and I'd say I sort of understood where food came from. And I went to university and did a degree that wasn't necessarily um, related to the food industry. And that's where I came across MDS. They were there on a on affairs um on a fair day and that's where I started speaking to them and sort of understood the the opportunities within the industry and how broad it is and I think that's the thing at the bottom we need to get as many people in because then you get pick of the crop when you get up to the top yep. and that's when you get the leaders coming in so it's sort of to raise awareness at a, at a school level so for sort of when you're when you're thinking about possibilities of where you want to go with your career no one ever talks to you about the food industry and that's no one ever puts forward sort of that as an ideal for a route yeah. Well, 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 well said, Loris. I'm just going to pull on that thread with that with Lucy. Lucy, just for those that don't know, could you just um, uh, portray what's the, the two years involves with the MDS uh, program for the trainees, please? Because it's very, very important in relation yeah, to uh, the Russian uh, point. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's actually one of the main attractions for Finsbury to get involved with the MDS. So over, over the uh, two year program, um, trainees will do four placements across um, four different businesses um, and generally within different sectors, uh, particularly of those businesses. So what you get at the end of the day, there was two things that are really important for me about MDS. First of all is the selection um, process that, um, I'll, I'll use the Royal Wee here, take my Finsbury <laughs> hat off for a second. The selection process that we go through is very rigorous. So it really is at the front end, the top, top tier that are coming in through the, the selection proce process and assessment um, that Kirsty and Safi and the team um, drive. But then um, what you get is you get um, people going through um, a selection of different placements across different businesses in different areas of the business. So you get real breadth across the food and uh, fresh produce industry, which means when they come out the other side, they might have had a steep learning curve but what you get is really well-rounded and um, balanced leaders who not only hit the ground running in each placement, but also hit the ground running as um, leaders in your business. And I'll use John as a fantastic example of that within Finsbury. You know, I've, I've watched John um, come into his, um, you know, very important continuous improvement role within our business. And he's now leading and driving and influencing the agenda across group projects. And doing that, quite frankly, um, better than a lot of more time served um, experienced leaders. And I'm 100% convinced that as a result of the grounding that he's had through the MDS programme. Wow. Wow. Well, there's an endorsement. And, and everyone, I think that's one of the issues that we have within the, the fresh food sectors is it is just everyone is striving, <laughs> striving to survive the day and um, and uh, progress on to the next day. Um, the thought of people being out of a business for, say, two weeks on a specific uh, course, whether that be with the likes of MDS or um, an, another external course, whether that be technical supply chain, sales training, negotiation. Um, when when we've looked to present that to, to clients, um, we meet quite a lot of resistance about we need these people in the business. Uh, we, we can't let them go. But actually, the best thing that they can do is let them go because they're going to come back far better individuals, even if it was just a one week or two week course, that the they value they're going to be able to add to that, that business. Just, so, so everyone, do you think we've got a bit of a blocker that because of the, the pressures that we're on as a, as a sector, it's very difficult for those employers to, to let go, to actually invest in their teams because they don't see the immediate return of, um, of investment. And, and if you agree with me, how can we, how can we free, free that up? Libby, what do you think? How, how can we get... Um, employers to get more engaged with the likes of MDS or other external uh, courses for their teams? What do you think? Um, I think at the moment, well, a, a few companies that I've worked for haven't quite understood what MDS has been about. So maybe just taking the time to actually research it and listen to podcasts like this and try and get a better understanding of how great the scheme is. Got it. That's Could well done, Kirsty. Um, I, I definitely say it's, it's really difficult for um, businesses within the industry to not only be able to see the benefits of sort of the long term investment um, that comes with training and development, but also like dealing with the immediate. Oh, well, how do I even get started on it? 
if you don't have anybody internally who's able to do that training, you have to go externally and then that ends up being um, expensive. But what we're seeing, um, especially from people sort of age 20 to 26, is that they, they want a career which is going to give them development opportunities. But we can see that that's a really big ask for a lot of um, businesses. You probably might need to recruit somebody to manage that internally. But the benefit of MDS, um, sort of um, selling my, my little point here, is that we do all of that for you. So we take off the cost of going out and promoting your business or the industry to that okay. wider audience. We do all the recruitment. We have a very rigorous um, recruitment process in so much that only 7% of people who apply to the MDS scheme actually get onto it. But we actively want people to get onto it as well. So it's all about going out to find the right people. And if we don't have the right opportunity, um, obviously at the moment we currently only do a graduate scheme, what other things can we do? Because those people still would want to work with the industry and it's about helping them find their, their right route, but also supporting those businesses who maybe have a, an aging leadership pipeline and gonna need new people coming up to it, but finding that and investing that time and energy is so costly for them. Yeah, yeah. Kirsty, thank you. And one of my colleagues has just WhatsApp me to say, come on everyone, let's talk about the positives. So let, let's not um, talk about the issues that we've got in the short term because it, it, those issues, they're just gonna make us stronger. And there's always a, always a solution. And it's not like we are representing uh, the VHS video sector or blockbusters. We're in a sector that, that is that is growing and it's so exciting to be involved with. So let's talk about that. What, what does everyone see is going to be the most exciting developments in the fresh food sectors uh, for, for yourselves and for those coming through uh, university and, um, and to, into the MDS scheme? What's the most exciting developments that, that you're seeing at the, uh, at the moment? Matt, over to you. I mean, I can't get enough still of what I was working with biologicals. I mean, this alternate to using chemicals as uh, crop protection and even actually just enhancing the crop. I just think there's such a future there and I'm really, uh, that'd be something I'd love to work with in the future for sure. Wow. Uh, Larissa? I think sort of to build on what Matt said, the, the there's so much, um, let's say this, uh, so this is, it's not just extracurricular anymore. Everyone's focusing on doing the right thing and sort of putting the planet first. And that is driving a huge amount of innovation, which is really exciting to see to come into the industry. We obviously have those challenges and the pressure now is really being put on the businesses to make a difference and come up with those solutions. Yeah, but I, I'm going to have to date myself. I, I re, am I going to date myself? I remember when uh, the, the, the first uh, pictures were coming through on phones of someone standing in an iceberg crop in, in Spain and being able to send it over to the likes of G's uh, back in the UK so that someone didn't actually have to fly out there and manually look at it. And mm -hmm. now look where, where we are in the respect of um, uh, real time uh, communications, not only from Spain, but from Senegal, thinking around and, and the, yeah, the, the robotics that, that are coming in is, is also gonna be so exciting as they, as, they, as they get to, as the tech gets sorted out. John, what are you most excited about, about the innovation side of the sector, please? I think I'm touching on from what my colleague said a while ago about farm to fork. Um, you know, there are technology being developed or is already developed where, you know, when you scan back of a packaging of something that you're buying, it shows you, you know, where this product has come from, who's been involved in it, you know, how far it's traveled, what are the carbon emissions from that product, and potentially maybe soon, you know, we could get something on that label that says, similar to, you know, our fats and our sugar content, where it said, yeah. oh, this is a green, it's actually environmentally friendly, or this is actually a red, you know, it's not fair trade, or so things like that, you know, it's like the, the simple things, but um, I think it's quite interesting that we're becoming more transparent. Yeah, and it's, and it's interesting how the technology is coming in and out. QR codes are, are racing back in. Mm. So I think we're going to be um, there again shortly where we'll be able to look at a product, uh, scan it with our QR code, and we'll be able to see the grower who's, uh, who's grown it, whether that be in Lincolnshire and Spain or, uh, or India. Lucy, what are you excited about in the respect of the, the, the technology within the food sectors? Yeah, I mean, absolutely the, the sustainable um, aspects excite me, you know, and what's coming through and what the future looks like. But I have to say in the technology side, particularly in terms of some of the robotics and smart automation technology. And I, I'm actually excited about the technology, but more excited about the opportunity it brings for people, because what we're ultimately going to be able to move to is, um, I don't like the term workforce, a team member population where it is a higher skilled population, which will yeah. do our industry 
um, no end of good in terms of the PR and also means that we're investing in people. And if we use sustainability as a holistic term in terms of everybody having a better quality of life in the future. Um, so for me, that's probably the most exciting automation leading to that. You know, automation shouldn't be a thing to be feared. Absolutely. Um, well, well, well said. It's ev evolution, not revolution. Isn't exactly. It? That's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Kirsty, you must have seen a bit of a sea change in the, in the respect of the positions that your members are, are presenting you in the, in the respect of technology. Absolutely. So when MDS was founded, we were predominantly within agricultural roles, which is very blanket term, but more farm based farm management roles. We are now seeing roles coming through, looking at the, the marketing and sort of the, the project management type of things. But like I mentioned earlier, we're definitely seeing that request from our members for more um, engineering type role so they're looking at how and how they improve their efficiencies and um, there's loads coming through in terms of the e-commerce as well as people sort of change yes. the way yes. they shop and one of the great things I think about this industry is it's so important there's no other industry where well maybe other than um, healthcare um, where it has to exist we can't do without it we can't do without food we have challenges coming up that they're exciting to be able to challenge and to be part of that story where you can sort of sit around and you're retired you're 80 on your last legs well, well we're all going to live about a thousand nowadays aren't we but you can say you know what? I was part of that I I made those changes I've made a difference to people and I think that for me is what's really exciting yeah, but there's this uh, saying that I've, I've, I've used over the last 18 months that in a world war or world recession or, or world pandemic, the two people have got to do two things. They've got to eat and they've got to clean. So if you're in the eating or the cleaning <laughs> game, you're, you're going to be safe. Yeah. Um, Ellie, Ellie, can we persuade you to come, come over to the dark side and get into the food sector? Because I'm, I'm sure, that, uh, I'm, I'm sure that Lucy can get you a job or Matt can get you a job with Iceland. What do you reckon, Ellie? Great. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> um, no, I think I'm just really excited to hear everybody's approach, really. It's that amazing hearing such kind of environmentally minded people that are leading the change and, um, and you know, people coming in that are thinking laterally and creatively with bringing new ideas, but actually also prepared to work with the elders of the industry and kind of intergenerationally to, to move towards those shifts because we're as a species, we have a time of like huge cultural shift that needs to happen. And that's really scary, but there are so many opportunities in it. And I think that's that's exciting to hear everybody embracing that. Oh, Ellie, Ellie, you're very, very good. Um, everyone, just as we're, <laughs> just as we're, we're um, uh, wrap, wrapping up, because we're just um, uh, slightly running out of time. What would be great is with all of you, you've all had your um, experiences of um, fresh food or fresh produce of, of MDS. Um, and you would have had some highs and some and some lows. I, I call it the the lay by moment. And I'm, I'm gonna I'm not gonna quote me. I'm gonna quote one of my friends. Uh, one of my friends. He got into uh, into the grain trade in the first couple of weeks of his um, of his role in his company car. He pulled into um, a lay by and he booed his eyes out because he thought I'm never gonna be able to do this. I can't get on with these farmers. I don't understand anything of, um, about about this business. I don't know how I'm gonna prosper. Um, I'm just really and he booed his eyes out. That was a number of years ago. Today. He's chairman of that business, and it's a fifty million pound turnover grain business that operates in a, um, three or four counties in the eastern counties. And we always talk about this over a beer. How he had his lay by moment, but I've had my lay by moments with, with yourself. What 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 have you learned? What are the pitfalls that you would sh you would happily share with us so that we know what to do? So those those listening in know what to do if they if they come across a similar situation. What what are the mistakes that you've made that we can learn from? Gone, Libby. I'm going to pick on you first. What 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 have you what what do you wish you could do again? Um, I think just it's learning to be comfortable being outside of your comfort zone. And there have been so many times on MDS where I've been thrown into a situation where I think this is terrible. I, this is awful. I can't do this. And then I think, no, because if you're not outside your comfort zone, you're not learning anything. And that keeps, it's sort of drilled into you and you learn to love being pushed into uncomfortable situations because you know that you're improving. Excellent. There's a great saying, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. L Larissa, what can you tell us? What, what pitfalls have you come across that we can learn from? 
Um, I think um, it's not being as scared of opportunity. Something that you go into, it, it doesn't have to be your forever, but it's definitely going to broaden your experience and broaden your understanding. And it will make you uni unique in terms of your point of view and what you bring to the table. So I think just give back yourself and give it 100%. Well done. Matt, you and I have been on uh, your podcast before. What really impressed me about yourself was your, was your confidence. And uh, technically not an arrogant in any, any way, but the, I don't think I would have had your level of confidence at, um, at, at your age. And I'm going to just state that I think one of the reasons you've got that is because of what MDS installed in you. But pitfalls, what, what can we learn from you as to um, what, what you've picked up in the past, please? No, I, I have to agree with Libby all the way with this. I think the changeover period with MDS is difficult. I think you come through these problems and it can be very uncomfortable. And I've definitely struggled myself in that. But actually, this confidence, as you say, it comes from MDS. Actually having people who you can network with, talk to, who've all been in that same situation as you, really help you get through it and really help you be the best you can during this course. So I'd probably have that, really. Well done. And I'm sure you've all found the same when you've been um, on your training courses and, and you got to the bar or or, or the uh, where, the hotel where you're ha having your food um, and you start talking. Everyone's got the same problems. Everyone's got the same problems, but everyone's got a solution um, that they've seen previously. So to be able to share that within the MDS structure would be great. John, talk to us. I bet you've had no problems in your life ever, ever have you? You're just so perfect. <laughs> I think. Of course not. Always a happy guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with MDS, you know, we get four different secondments. You meet a lot of people. Um, what I would have done differently is perhaps maybe scheduled, scheduled in more time for maybe perhaps coaching or mentoring from, you know, your industry lead. Uh, that would have been something I, yeah, I would have changed. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm doing it now um, at Finsbury, um, you know, getting a lot of coaching from, from, you know, your execs, from your consultants. But I think, you know, our journey with MDS, you get to meet a lot of executives a lot of you know heads of departments i think just taking the time to ask for you know half an hour to to be coached or mentored for example excellent well john john that's that's fascinating because uh, all of those people are very very charitable and at, at one point they were uh, students themselves and for you to ask just for half an hour of their time so that you that they're actually going to it's not that they're going to have big egos but they, they want to share it and to actually have someone who's interested in, in their background i could see would be very very beneficial come on lucy what what can you tell us that you've learned in yeah. the past that's, that's going to better okay, all of so, us so if you ever want to do a comedy podcast about mistakes get me straight on it because i've <laughs> made some crackers let me tell you um but what i would say is uh, the most no matter how hard it's been at the time i've taken each one as a learning opportunity and i've also been really lucky to work for businesses and um, especially the one i work for now which i've been with for the past 10 years that very much is um you've been allowed to make mistakes and there's almost like a safety circle round about you so that you can learn um, from that. And what I would say to, to everyone is really important when you're making a business selection is that a good progressive company will offer that learning environment because it's the only way to tr create true leaders. Yeah, well, well said. When you go for an interview, Lucy, they're not only interviewing you, you're interviewing them. Right. And we're definitely finding this now, going back to this, this, uh, this sort of golden thread that we're, we've, we've had running through this broadcast, is that um, uh, the younger generation want to work for companies that they want to be associated with. And those companies that people don't want to be associated with, they won't gain the likes of you coming, coming into them. Um, Ellie, come on, I'm, I'm not going to let you add, uh, off, off on this one. What have you learned in your, in your career that, um, that um, people dialing in, students can, can learn from from you, please? Uh, well, yes, so I did, um, I did my first grad scheme, my grad scheme that I did was teach first, actually. So I was a teacher in, in London and, um, and I think it's just, yeah, I think that level of challenge was, so, it was an excruciating couple of years. Um, and I, it doesn't sound like the MDS graduates say the same thing, so, um, but it, I've learned so much from it. And I think it's just, um, yeah, being able to embrace the difficulty, but also I think, yeah, building that network, it's so crucial, even it just, it's so lasting through your career. And I think it's the softer, they call them soft skills, but you know, it's all the th skills that you're building around your, your different placements. Like it's one thing you showing up practically for your job every day, but it's actually all of the kind of the resilience that you're building and the social skills um, that you're building by by showing up to these different places. Like it's actually enormous ask hearing what you guys are doing, kind of yeah. uprooting your life and yeah. starting again four times over. That's that's huge. But I guess it just must add such a 
yeah layer of resilience and and um, and perspective as well like learning from all those different businesses and environments I think my my mistakes are often being so values led that I'm not necessarily open to working in a different way or listening yeah. to somebody I don't agree agree with and that's something I'm really trying to challenge and I think you guys are obviously doing that immediately in your careers which sounds great. Ellie well done I've just got to use this phrase, phrase uh, again um, life begins at the end of your comfort zone get involved mm. with MDS and if it's not MDS um, do what John um, intimated that if you're if you've got someone within your business that you think you could learn from um, do, do you remember Kirsty, uh, uh, Christine, Christine take on the, the chair of uh, MDS states this and so many broadcasts that we've done with her, get a mentor, get a mentor, if you can find the right individual, they will help you tremendously through, through your career, through the, uh, the, the fresh food sectors. So just, just to wrap up, Kirsty, just, just give, give us a big rah-rah about MDS and how we can find out about MDS, how we get engaged with MDS, whether that be a possible trainee or a company, please. So it. Basically, if you want to find anything else um, about us, website's always a good place, but we're also really active on our socials. So um, from the perspective of if you want to find out what life is really like as a trainee, we have a fantastic Instagram page where it's taken over by a different trainee each month and they give you the, the true ins and outs um, of the programme. Um, and then for our members, we do lots of um, different corporate events. So we're actually going to be at PropTech on the 24th and 25th if you want to come and um, see us there, we'll be giving a talk and we've also got a stand for the two days and we'd love to see people. Um, but we always try to say that we are more than willing to talk about MDS and find out how we can help you. That's what we're here to do. Even if it's you, you just want some career advice or you want advice on your next interview or applications, um, we also sort of want to help people with that and also for the businesses um, as well. MDS isn't quite what you need at the moment. What could it be or what could we advise you to do um, in the future? Excellent. So everyone, let's just summarise this up. Uh, why should people join MDS? Why should people get involved with the, with the fresh food sectors? Larissa, you go first, please. Um, yeah, I think that it's just the amount of opportunity and it's the great people that you meet as well. Everyone's really passionate and like minded and there's a real sense of community. Um, it's it's very vast in terms of the opportunity, but it's very small in terms of bumping into people. So it's just a really great community and everyone sort of pushes each other on. Larissa, uh, sorry, Libby. I think if you want a challenge and you want a fast paced industry, this is the right place to be. Wow. God, that's, 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 they're very good. They're, they're, everyone's fantastic. John, it's that payment I slipped them earlier. <laughs> John, <laughs> I agree with what Lyris said. It's all it's all about you know opportunity, networking, and experience with MBS. Excellent, uh, Matt. Um, again, what these guys are saying: network, opportunity. You meet so many people, and it just gives you such a good insight into the industry. That gives you that jump start. There you go. Uh, and Lucy, come on, you're. Uh, uh, You've been through MDS, you're a director of MDS, you um, have MDS with it within your business. Why should people be aligned to MDS, please, Lucy? Okay, so first and foremost, um, going back to why people should join the food and fresh produce industry, there is so much opportunity and it's so diverse um, in terms of what's open to people. And actually, it can lead to a really fantastic career that you can progress quickly in. And what MDS does is set you up really nicely to thrive in that world because you get all the learning and leadership skills that you need in order to hit the ground running. And the final thing I'm going to say, and it's nothing to do with the question, I just wanted to go back to mentorship to say that most people will, um, when you ask for some mentorship, will actually see it as a privilege. So don't ever yeah. be afraid to ask. Just wanted to say that. That's Excellent, Lucy. Um, and Ellie, MDS is so generous uh, in respect of, uh, getting the likes of, uh, of yourself on uh, just just give, we, we need to give a, a big shout out for the rural youth project especially with everything that you guys have achieved to date and with the likes of the the, the possible partnerships with the likes of carol Ford. can you just tell us about uh, the rural youth project and how we can all get involved please um so yeah this year we're, we're sort of looking at how we can we do a lot of storytelling that's our kind of main outlet and we're doing we're putting on these things like ideas festivals next year um so you can we'll definitely make that available when, as soon as we have links and things for that but um but i think again like it's it's kind of being able to tell some of your stories so i'd love to speak to some of you guys about what you do and how you've kind of got to where you are and what you're interested in is is in the sector because I think again like we see that kind of partnership for 
how do we tell other young people, particularly young people growing up in rural areas, like how to overcome some of the obstacles and challenges that they face and see opportunity rather than just, yeah, the barriers. Um, and so I think being able to kind of to follow through with their agricultural roots and but move into more exciting leadership challenges and having the opportunity to contribute to sort of bigger food system change, I think that could be really exciting. So. Yeah, I'd love to just stay in touch and hear more about it. Uh, Ellie, well, well done. The, the one word that you're, you're missing on that is collaboration. Uh, one thing this, this sector is so good at is collaborating, even more so over the, over the last eight, 18 months. So everyone, we've, we're just running out of, out of time, but we've just got one, one request in. A uh, contact of mine is going to donate £50 to, uh, to Ravi, uh, Royal Agricultural Benevolent Association. Matt, if you spin round twice on your spinny chair. So Matt, <laughs> are you prepared to spin round twice? Yeah, here he goes. Go. One, <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> and we've lost Matt. Matt has left That's the building. That's the problem of being on a phone, isn't it? <laughs> uh, okay, they're, they're still going to send the 50 quid. So, well done, everyone. Th thank you very much. You now know everything you need to know about MDS, why they will enhance your career within the fresh food sectors, why you need to join the fresh food sectors, and likewise, if you're a business who wants to better yourself, whether that be turnover, profitability, staff retention, or just doing good, join MDS. Get in contact with Kirsty and the rest of the gang to find out more. Everyone, you've been brilliant. Look after yourselves and we'll see you at the next one, hopefully face-to-face. -face. Well done, <laughs> everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.